Hello everybody, Driven by Moss 18.4 is out and it's all about Cocos Reaper. I did some specific tweaks to the Reaper version of Driven by Moss, especially the browser got improved, but let's look into that in detail. First thing is, you know, that you can map parameters for quite some time. So you can go on this parameters button and then we'll get here the mapping button. And one issue with that was if you map one of these parameters to a parameter page, then this name was fixed. But it turns out there are some parameters like, for example, here with the massive plugin from Native Instruments, that it has some macro controls and change their name with each of the patches, depending on what you have mapped to this macro controls. And this is now supported as well. You can simply clear the field and then it will just show keep the name and the parameter number. And this will now work. So I did that for the second and third macro parameter, but not with the first. So you can see the difference. I have here the WT pos and macro two and macro three. So this was the previously assigned value. So let's go here now to the browser and let's select the patch. And you will see that the macros change, but not the first one and this one now also changed as well and yeah this works nicely and i think a bit of an improvement for such dynamic parameters which can now also assign to your pages Next one is the browser. So for example, let's add here an equalizer to the channel because the equalizer has some nice presets with it. If you see here, there are some presets as well. And then go into the plugin mode and then switch to the equalizer and then open the browser. You will get here the presets and you can navigate them as well. So the improvement and you can also accept it. So improvement is they directly open with the correct parameters and also all the filter columns which do not apply to the presets are automatically hidden. You can show them or hide them as well, but as I said, they don't have any function. So we could also show them and hide them, but it's best like this. So then you can also accept it and use this new selected preset. But there's more features for that if you just add another new plugin. So let's go with shift and insert here on a Mackie control. By the way, this works for all of the devices which support browsers, not only the Mackie control. And so you all get these benefits. And also in that view of the devices, you can show or hide columns which you don't need. By default, the texts are hidden because they are empty. But you could also hide, for example, if you're not interested in the creator, you can hide them as well. But one thing to note, it will not change here on a controller so this will still show the controls in the same order as before but it might help you to have a little bit less cluttered view here in the browser. And also the browser columns have some changes. So for example, I replaced the location, which was not too meaningful with the architecture. So you can now filter for Intel X64. And this makes especially sense on the Mac platform, where you also have now ARM. So you can, for example, prefer your ARM devices or your Intel devices. Also, I cleaned that up. So it does not say the differentiation between instruments and effects. It's just now the plugin interfaces. So VST, 23, CLAP, and JS. And that's another new thing. Also, clap devices are now supported in a browser, so you can also filter with the file type for only your clap devices. And with clap, there came also this preference in the normal browser of a Reaper. So if you open the Reaper browser and go here on add and there is this option menu where you can give a priority for different tribes you want to see. For example, my first priority is here. I want to see clap devices, for example, from Yuhi's Bacilla. And if Bacilla is there in a clap format, it will not show the VST3 version, which would be my second choice. So if there is no clap version of the plugin, show me the VST3. And you can also go on if you have multiple implementations, but I think two are more than enough. And this filtering is also applied now to the browser. If we go back here to adding a new browser plugin, you will see if we go here to all and filter for instruments and see here, but still is only here in the clip version. But one thing to note, if you explicitly select the VST3 version, you will still get also the VST3 version as a selectable item.
There's also some small improvements to the smart folders, which are also, if we go back to the original browser of Reaper, here, for example, with Reverb, I have a smart folder. And there you can say these different combinations of or and not what you want to see. And before that, it did not work to have uh, braces around the name, for example, like this. And this is now working as well as a filter. Another nice thing, especially here now for the Mackie control, so this is specific for the Mackie control with Reaper, is if we load another project which contains more tracks. So let's just go to my little test project which contains several tracks. Let's go up from that. You see multiple tracks and currently you had only the single selection. With the combination of shift, you can select multiple tracks. And the nice thing about it is that then these group the faders. For example, you can now change the level of these three channels at once. It's the same for muting, so you can mute them at once, solo at once, or also rec enable them as once, and also change the panorama of we are in a volume mode. So we need to go to panorama. Also, panorama could be changed at once for these three channels. So pretty helpful thing. There's a little issue if you just press that one. This does not work because I already selected. You need to go to another track and then go back to the track. So as a little workaround. Another little detail is if you change something in a project, for example, if I click here, you will get a notification that the project has changed. So you see it also in the title, it got modified. And then also the save button got lit here on the Mac control. And if you then press it, it goes off and as an indication that your project is saved. So much for those nice improvements, especially for the browser. I think it makes it more functional and more usable now with Reaper. And I hope you like it. Dig it and make some funky music. <laughs>